A colleague of mine, a woman, started harassing me as soon as I joined the company. Incredibly, she stole my boyfriend and even had the nerve to invite me to their wedding. During this time, I lost my beloved mother. She relentlessly pursued her self-centered actions, insisting I attend her wedding while I was drowning in grief and even revealed a past incident involving my brother. My name is Yolanda. I'm 20 years old, just graduated from community college this spring, and got a job in accounting at a local company. Nice to meet you all. As I said this and bowed, there were a pause. My parents and my older brother Owen, who's three years older. I think we've lived a relatively laid-back and peaceful life. I've been blessed with friends, and while we're not rich, we're a close-knit family that goes on a family trip once a year. We had planned a family trip this year, too, before I started my job, but it was canceled due to mom's ill health. Tess revealed she had pancreatic cancer, and she's been hospitalized for the past two months. Pancreatic cancer is hard to detect, and by the time it's discovered, it's often advanced. Mom bravely endured the tough treatments, but it was heartbreaking to see my always kind and cheerful mom growing weaker. To take care of the family, I thought about calling off my job start. I discussed it with Dad and Owen, but Owen said, I'm better at cooking and stuff than Yolanda. The three of us can manage together. And Dad told me, Yolanda, you have your own life. Work hard at your job and become independent. So here I am, feeling a bit useless. We decided as a family to pull together and not worry Mom. That became our household's theme. On my first day at work, sitting at my new desk, my colleague Rachel asked me out of the blue, Hey, do you have an older brother? Yes, I do, but... I thought so. You have a somewhat unique last name. You must resemble your brother, right? Indeed, since childhood, people have said Owen and I look alike. Wondering if she knew him, she spitefully said, those narrow eyes and that absent-minded face are just like his. My eyes aren't particularly big, but I wouldn't say they're narrow. I just have a face that looks like I'm always smiling, or when I do smile, my eyes look very narrow, similar to Owen's. That's what I often hear. From my first day at work, I was taken aback by the harsh attitude of my colleague Rachel. More surprised than angry, really. I guess because of my absent-minded face as she put it. I'd never experienced being disliked so instantly. Rachel's treatment of me continued to be harsh. It wasn't like she was guiding me as a colleague. Rather, she often didn't provide me with the proper information or data, leading to my mistakes. Then, loud enough for others to hear, she would say things like, Oh, this newbie is so useless. I told her everything, yet she still makes such mistakes. An older employee confided that Rachel, being the daughter of an important client and a nepotism hire, was difficult for our manager to reprimand. I was somehow impressed and realized such drama-like situations really happen. Then one day while I was entering data, Huh? Wasn't this specification changed? I told someone to inform the newbies yesterday, right? Austin, Rachel's peer, came over. Oh, sorry. I thought it was obvious and didn't tell her, Rachel responded. A veteran might understand, but you need to explain things properly to a newbie. I feel like an old person being called a veteran. Sorry about that, Yolanda, Rachel said, pretending to be bright and cheerful. Austin was always considerate. Not just to me, but to all new employees. A genuinely nice person. When I started to develop a slight crush... He asked me out for a meal. Your smile is so reassuring. Will you join me for dinner again? He said. I was overjoyed and had no reason to refuse. That's how I got my first boyfriend. Rachel continued her petty harassment, but I gradually got used to it. I began checking with others before starting tasks she assigned, avoiding mistakes. I might not see it myself, but according to Owen, I'm genuine and tough-skinned. 
As time went by, my work was recognized and people openly started questioning Rachel's behavior as a bit odd. Then came a day for a get-together with Austin's peers, including Rachel. I was inwardly reluctant, but Austin reassured me, I have a date with you tomorrow, so I'll leave early. That put my mind at ease. However, after that day, we never went on a date. Austin called the next day to cancel our date due to illness. He sounded really unwell, so I offered to visit him, but he insisted that resting would be enough. Ever since that day, Austin strangely started avoiding me. Even when I wanted to talk to him alone, he would find excuses to escape. Then one day, Austin said he needed to talk and what he told me while I was hopeful for a private conversation was unbelievable. I'm sorry, I want to break up. When I asked him if I did something wrong, he replied, No, absolutely not. It's all my fault. I'm really sorry. And he bowed his head to me. Actually, I'm getting married to Rachel. I couldn't comprehend what Austin was saying for a moment. What? What do you mean? Rachel, she seems to be pregnant, so I have to take responsibility. Cheating? Stealing away a boyfriend? Words I never thought would relate to me were swirling in my head. I was dumbstruck. My mind went blank, and Austin kept bowing and apologizing to me. Despite talking about something as happy as marriage, he looked genuinely distressed but I was too overwhelmed with my own emotions to worry about Austin's strange behavior. My first boyfriend. My first breakup. And in such a shocking way, I was deeply hurt. The next day at work, Rachel added insult to injury. You heard from Austin, right? We're getting married. You have to come to the wedding. It's in a hurry because I don't want my belly to show. So the wedding's in a month, counting on you. Rachel said it so happily, so triumphantly. Thinking calmly, something must have happened at that drinking party with the peers. I didn't want to believe it, but maybe they got involved under the influence of alcohol. Then, as if things couldn't get worse, Mom's condition worsened. In a situation where she could pass away at any moment, she was only worried about the family she would leave behind. Yolanda? You seem a bit down lately. Owen, take care of Yolanda for me. I'm sorry to ask this of you. Please, take care of the kids. Every visit to mom, she would say this, and all we could reply was, It's okay, don't worry mom. Get well soon. Mom passed away on a Friday. Just two days before Austin and Rachel's wedding reception. Owen, Yolanda? Be happy, were Mom's last words. We planned a wake on Saturday and the funeral service Sunday, so I had to cancel attending their wedding. Unsure who to contact, I thought Austin might say something kind, which would hurt more, so I decided to call Rachel. What? That's so rude to cancel last minute. You have to come. I understood that canceling last minute was impolite, but Rachel's reaction seemed incredibly insensitive to someone who had just lost a loved one. I'm sorry, but my beloved mom has passed away. I need to prioritize the funeral. Even after saying this, Rachel reacted unbelievably. Are you lying? You just don't want to come to the wedding, right? It's classic to use a family death as an excuse to cancel last minute. It's not a lie. Mom was hospitalized for a long time and I would never use a family death as an excuse. Rachel, seemingly irritated by my response, hysterically shouted, If you don't come, all my efforts will be wasted. Just come no matter what. And abruptly hung up. On the morning of the funeral, You must come to the wedding. If you don't, you'll regret it. Rachel called again, almost threateningly. But how could I leave Mom's funeral for a wedding? The funeral ended in the evening, with fewer mourners remaining. Amidst the grief of losing mom and the pain of Austin, who I loved, marrying another woman, I was completely drained. 
Owen, concerned, approached me. You had some trouble with someone from work at the wedding, right? I think he vaguely knew I had a boyfriend. Yes, the man I was dating is getting married. As I said this with tears in my eyes, Owen was shocked. What? What's that guy thinking? It's not him. It's the bride. I don't understand what Rachel is thinking. She's been harassing me since I joined the company. When I mentioned Rachel's name, Owen seemed even more surprised. That Rachel? I was taken aback. I remembered Rachel asking if I had a brother when I first joined the company. Owen, do you know her? Owen's story was shocking. In their student days, Rachel aggressively pursued Owen and they briefly dated. But as Owen got to know her personality, he couldn't keep up and initiated a breakup. She's selfish, strong-willed, and doesn't try to understand others. She gets upset if things don't go her way. She was a terrible person. Oh. Owen sighed, recalling the past. After I tried to break up, she asked for one last date. I suddenly felt dizzy, and when I woke up, I was in bed with her in a hotel. I swear I don't get that drunk, and it wasn't my intention. Indeed, I've never seen Owen so drunk that he'd lose control. So you really love me, right? Rachel smirked maliciously, and Owen was horrified. Sometime later, Rachel claimed she was pregnant. Wait, that means... She asked me to marry her, but I couldn't believe her words, and I couldn't imagine that I had done anything with her. When he took her to the hospital for a checkup, Rachel came back from the bathroom saying, It seems I was mistaken. My period just started. It was all a lie. I'd never sleep with a woman I dislike, no matter how drunk. I hate even seeing your face now. Don't ever contact me again. Owen's words were harsh, but perhaps that was the only way to end things. It's easy to imagine Rachel holding a grudge against Owen for being rejected so decisively. I'm sorry. The harassment you face might be because of me. She's that kind of woman. Owen apologized to me. Owen, my boyfriend also had something happen after a drinking party, and Rachel claimed she was pregnant and they had to get married. She said something strange about her efforts being wasted if I didn't attend the wedding. Rachel's actions were incomprehensible, and perhaps Austin was a victim of her scheme too. But would she go to such lengths in her grudge against Austin, even to harass me? Disliking someone and then hating their associates? Is that how it works? I don't know, but is this okay for you, Yolanda? You still love him, right? Owen asked. I nodded silently. I still have feelings for Austin. I don't want to see him unhappy. After their wedding reception, Austin and Rachel were supposed to stay overnight at the hotel before leaving for their honeymoon the next day. Dad, sorry, we're stepping out for a bit. It's important for my sister. I think Mom would understand. Owen said to Dad, then pulled me out of the house. Be happy. Mom's last words echoed in my mind, bringing tears as Owen and I headed to the hotel. Friends had their wedding reception here today, but due to a family emergency, we couldn't attend. We at least want to give them a congratulatory gift. Could you call Rachel for us? We asked at the hotel reception, using Owen's name. Owen, you're kidding, right? You came to see me? Rachel, beaming, almost ran to hug Owen as she descended to the lobby. I hid behind a pillar, out of Rachel's sight. I heard you got married, and congratulations. Owen played along. Does your coming mean you still have feelings for me? Rachel's words to another man on her wedding day were unbelievable. Yeah, I guess I do regret it. Owen's strained smile was visible even from a distance. I married some guy I don't care about because you rejected me, but I can divorce him right away. In fact, I haven't even filed the marriage certificate yet. Hearing her call Austin some guy, I was furious, but relieved they hadn't filed the certificate. But what about the baby? Oh, that was a misunderstanding. I'm not pregnant. 
As soon as Owen got this admission, he signaled me. I called Austin. Could you come to the elevator hall, please? This is... unbelievable. Austin was dumbfounded when I told him everything. Sorry, it's all because of Owen. No, your brother's not to blame. He had every right to leave her. I should have trusted myself more and stood up to her. I made a wrong choice and hurt you. Today was your mom's funeral service, right? I'm truly sorry. What will you do now? I'll take responsibility for my actions. I know I don't have the right to ask, but can you wait for me? I nodded, and Austin hugged me. Returning to the lobby, Rachel was gone, and Owen sat exhausted on the sofa. When Owen noticed me, he asked, Did you explain everything okay? Yeah, he seemed really shocked, but he said he'll take responsibility and ask me to wait for him, I replied. That's good. I'm exhausted. That woman thought she could reconcile with me, but that's never going to happen. <sighs> he sighed. Austin called me the next day around noon. Owen and I were at home during the morning period. According to Austin, Rachel surprisingly agreed to break up easily. Since the hotel was already booked, she decided to stay while Austin went home alone to explain everything to his parents. My parents were shocked. It took all night to explain. But in the end, they were relieved that such a terrible woman wasn't going to be their daughter-in-law. Austin then asked if he could come and pay respects to Mom with flowers. I had already debriefed Dad about the situation. Despite this being the first time my father and brother were meeting my boyfriend, they welcomed him warmly. This solves the problem, right? I wondered. No. No. Now I need to explain to the guests who came to the wedding and reception and return their gifts. Austin corrected. Owen received a call on his mobile, looking annoyed. And after a brief conversation said, The problem isn't quite resolved yet. I'm going to meet her and talk. Apparently, Owen had been pretending to be interested in Rachel to help Austin and her break up. I'm coming too. I'm going too. Austin and I said simultaneously. I was planning to handle this alone, but I'd be grateful for your support. Honestly, I never want to see your face again. As we headed to the cafe Rachel had chosen by taxi, Owen looked utterly fed up. When Rachel saw the three of us sitting at a four-seater table, she yelled, What is this? Why are two irrelevant people here? I came to talk about the future with Owen. There's no future between us. Owen stated firmly. What do you mean? It seems you've been harassing my sister at work, right? And this marriage was part of that. Why would I reconcile with someone who does such things to my sister? That's because you dumped me. Seeing her with a smile so much like yours makes me so angry. It's not my fault. Finally, I understood the reason behind the harassment. So you used me just to harass Yolanda? You never really intended to marry me, did you? I was wrong to believe your lie, Austin said. Austin seemed genuinely regretful. I thought marrying you was okay. You're not the bad one. But the one I really love is Owen, Rachel exclaimed. Her love for Owen appeared genuine, but that didn't excuse her actions. You may feel that way, but I hate you. I'll never be with you. Owen replied coldly leaving Rachel in tears. As we left the cafe, Rachel's voice followed us. Remember this, I won't forgive you. When I returned to work after the mourning period, my colleagues expressed their condolences and concern, not only about Mom's passing, but also about Rachel's actions. It seemed Austin had explained everything to them after surprising everyone by showing up at work instead of being on his honeymoon. I'll return the gifts. I'm really sorry. Austin said, apologizing to everyone. Most sympathized with him, likely due to Rachel's usual behavior. Rachel didn't show up for work, even after her scheduled return from the honeymoon. Meanwhile, our house faced continuous malicious harassment. The problem was not resolved yet. Large amounts of garbage dumped at our doorstep and vulgar insults painted on our walls. It was so severe 
We reported it to the police, who increased patrols in our area. Then one night, Rachel was caught trespassing in our garden with gasoline and a lighter and was arrested for possessing fire-setting materials with intent to commit arson. The charges were severe, considering her history of criminal behavior. Austin and I got back together, talking about living somewhere with better security when we marry. Owen, unfortunately, seems a bit wary of women now because of Rachel. Don't worry, Owen. She was an exception. You'll find someone great. I reassured him, but I'm not too worried. Owen calls me genuine and tough-skinned, but he's pretty resilient himself. Don't worry, Mom. We siblings will definitely be happy. Owen and I told our mother's photo 